Hey everybody, it's Ian, the Off-Kilter Crafter. I hope you're having a great day today. It's time for clue number seven of Sparkle and Shine from Cotton Cuts. It's so exciting that we're getting further and further along, so let's get to it. All right, it's time to open up clue packet number seven. I have my fabric guide. Don't forget to grab this. I always seem to forget it, but I have it today. I, of course, have my instructions. A few of you have asked in the comments what kind of iron this is. This is actually the Cricut Easy Press Mini. Uh, it's super perfect for ironing out my little clues as they happen. I have my pressing mat, of course, underneath my instructions, but uh, this is really perfect. It's very easy to grip and easy to use. It also has some sort of something on the plating of it that helps it glide over the fabric very easily. So highly recommend it. I'm not affiliated with Cricut. I do use a lot of Cricut products, uh, but I, I really like that for ironing out uh, pieces of clues or just fabric in general. So highly recommend that. All right, so let's go ahead and open up clue packet number seven and see what's inside. All right, for small clue number seven, I have 12, small triangles of fabric A, four small triangles of fabric D, four large triangles of fabric D, four small squares of fabric B. I have two smaller rectangles of A. And lastly, I have two longer rectangles of fabric C. So we have a shorter rectangle of fabric A and a longer rectangle of fabric C. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and move these fabrics onto the table behind me and we'll start off on step number one. All right, we're gonna be putting together our clues today. This is gonna be for section 7A and 7B. You'll be making two of section 7A and two of section 7B and the instructions below tell you how to do that. So starting off for step number one, this is actually gonna be a really easy one because this only has one step for 7A, it says to join a small triangle of A to the top right of a large triangle D. We're gonna press that towards the A fabric, and then we're gonna add a second triangle of A to the top left, and we're gonna press it towards A again. So again, we're making a lot of uh, flying geese in this quilt, and all we have to do is attach the right one, press towards A, attach the left one, press towards A, we're gonna do that four times in total. And again, if you are doing Moonstone, you do have this tone on tone fabric. Be very careful whenever you're putting that on. Uh, if you forget how to find what is the right side, you can kind of look at it at an angle. It's not gonna show up very well on camera, but in real life, if you're looking at it kind of on an angle, uh, the right side of the fabric, like the white, ink kind of pops at you as opposed to the other side where it's kind of muffled and hard to see. Muffled for vision, that doesn't really make sense. But you get what I mean. That's the way I did accidentally sew, I think on the last clue I sewed it backwards. But anyways, all right, so we're gonna do this four times. Let's go ahead and move over to the sewing machine and get that done. Okay, I've made four of these. I'm gonna go ahead and press these. I press these kind of like half square triangles where I go up and then I go over, and that really does seem to kind of help with warping and making sure that they stay uh, somewhat level and correct, I don't know. Anyway, so there we go, there's four of those. Uh, it says to label two of these as section 7A, and we're gonna use the other two to make section 7B. So I'm gonna go ahead and set these two aside, and I'll also, I'll be using these in the next step, so I'm gonna keep those right there. All right, moving on, step two onwards are for completing section 7B. So for step number two, it says to join a square of B to the left and right of remaining two step one units. Press towards B and then we can measure them out. So we're just gonna put our fabric B on either side just like that. We're gonna sew on either side and then we're gonna press towards B. So let's go ahead and do that and we're gonna do that two times. All right, I've gone ahead and pressed one, and now I'm pressing the other. Remember, we're pressing these towards our B fabric. In my case, it's this yellowish orange fabric. And whenever we're completed with this, it should, ooh, let me get that a little, that looks a little crooked. That's all right though. It's a little, little wibby jibby wubby, I don't know what I'm saying there, but anyway. So it's pressed out and it should measure 12 and a half inches by three and a half inches when you're done. We're gonna move on to step number three. I'm just embarrassing myself at this point. 
Okay, for step number three, it says to join a small triangle of A and D. We're gonna press towards D, and we're gonna make four of these, and these will measure three and a half square whenever we're finished. So we'll just plop that over just like that, so along the middle line, and then we will go ahead and press all that out. So let me head over to the sewing machine, and I'll be right back. All right, I have gone ahead and completed all that. I am gonna go ahead and press this. Again, if you're new to um, ironing out half square triangles, it's best to go up and then over and then press it out and just like that. And there we go, we have all four of those done. So they look just like that, perfect. Okay, moving along to step number four, it says to join step three units to the left and right of a rectangle of A. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our fabric here and I'm making sure to look at the picture as well because we want our lines to match up. You don't wanna just like put it on just like this because this isn't, this isn't right. We need to make sure that we are putting it on so that way the fabric A kind of makes this shape right here, kind of a bowl. It kind of looks like a bowl. So we gotta make sure that everything's lining up. So we're gonna put it onto the left and right of our rectangle. We're gonna make two of these and we're gonna press towards the rectangle in the center, just like that. We're gonna do that two times. All right, here we go. All right, I have one done right there. I'm going ahead and I'm going ahead and pressing this one as well. Remember, we're pressing towards our rectangle on the inner part of this section or this step, like that, just like that. And there we go, we got two kind of bowl shapes and now we're gonna move on to step number five. All right, moving on to step number five, it says to join step two which is uh, this one right here. I had to think for a second. Uh, join to the bottom of step four and we're gonna press towards step four. So we're gonna put these two together just like this. And I, I think I'm starting to see a pattern emerging. I'm not 100, well, no. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute, but we're just gonna go ahead and sew these two together just like this. Make sure you're sewing on this side because uh, I have been known to accidentally sew in the wrong way. All right, let's go ahead and do that and we're gonna do that two times. All right, I have finished sewing these together and now I'm pressing towards, uh, I'm, pres I'm pressing up towards my, what, what step was that? Step four, just like this, it's a little, wonky sometimes it doesn't want to press 100% nicely. I was gonna say before I put this clue together just a moment ago that it kind of looks like I was thinking that the sparkle and shine from this quilt was referring to stars because if you look at this clue we've got a nice bottom half of the star and all we would have to do is do a reverse of this flying geese so that it would be the A fabric in here and then the D fabric out here and you could get a nice point up at the top. So, uh, but step number six kind of cancels that idea and let's go ahead and move to that. Hey everyone, this is Ian from the editing room and I just remembered that all of the colorways are of course named after different types of minerals and gems and all that kind of stuff. So obviously this is referring to the sparkle and shine of minerals and gems and stuff like that. So, you know, it you see things whenever you're sewing in that very moment and you're like, oh, this is what it is. And then you step back and go, oh wait, right, exactly. So anyways, all right, back to your regularly scheduled program. All right, moving on to step number six, it says to join a long rectangle of C to the top of step number five. We're gonna press towards the C fabric, pressing up, and we're gonna make two of these. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, I just finished sewing that together. So now I'm pressing towards my fabric C. So upwards in this case, and press it just like that. I'm also gonna go a little bit over my block, just kinda Press everything back down again, just like that. And here we go, we are done. We've made two of these. I'm gonna just keep that one off to the side there, but we've made two of our 7B and make sure to label them with either clue or section 7B and we're done. So remember in today's clue, we made two of section 7A and two of section 7B. Make sure to label those and keep everything together because we are getting closer and closer to our finish line. Thanks for watching today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I'm making it my goal in 2021 to hit 100,000 subscribers. 
but I need your help to make that happen. Take a moment and subscribe to my YouTube channel and then don't forget to check out the other great videos that I have here on my channel. Also, share this video with your friends and tell them to come check out the Off-Kilter Crafter.